So we're out here with Maria and Isabel and they are ichthyologists and we're going to go fishing. They have this net where they sweep the net through the deeper parts of the water and try to get the fish to um, either be pinned against the bank or into the net and then they pull it up and see what's in this area. We're gonna go do that. So, are you ever afraid that you're like scaring the fish off by walking up the stream and, and they're probably getting out of the way? Or is that something that... Yeah, we don't supposed to like make that noise yeah. because they will run away. Yeah. So you're supposed to like, they're very quiet. Yeah. And you can do something like wait, you know, mm -hmm. put the net and they make the noise over there. Mm -hmm. So the fish will come and then you can oh. catch them. Okay. So. Well, let us know if we need to be quiet. Uh, well, we are um, specifically trying to get an uh, electric gill. Oh, okay. So that is why we are just going to this type of area. So what about this water makes it perfect for the eel? Because it's dark mm -hmm. and it's very deep. So they can be there like kind of hiding because, you know, if you know that eel is black. Yeah. It's because it's the water. Yeah. It could, probably could be like a less like wider mm -hmm. if it's in white water mm -hmm. but it's in black water so that's why it's black yeah so that's why you make it perfect yeah you can hide they can hide out camouflage yeah camouflage yeah. webs all over the place What's going on right now? So Maria is coming down from upstream trying to scare all the fish into this little net over here. <laughs> wow! It's the famous one. We caught the eel. We found the white whale. I feel like Ishmael a little bit. Actually, I didn't do anything. I just stood here while they uh, shuttled it into the net. But it's an amazing creature, and it's so fascinating that you can have these massive, like, four and a half feet to five feet, you know, meter and a half long eels living in an area like this because the water gets so low that at times they have to kind of uh, wiggle their way across the land and try and find different pools to live in. So it's pretty amazing that they can make a living down here and grow so large. Nice. <laughs> You going? Yep. So on tonight's adventures at the dinner table, we were all sitting around chatting when Pablo, one of our herpetologists, walked up holding this guy, which is a pygmy dwarf caiman that he found a little upstream from our bathing area. And uh, kind of in his nature, he went in and grabbed it and brought it to show it to us. It's uh, also called uh, a smooth front caiman. It's a, a small species of caiman that lives in, in streams uh, and lagoons in the Amazon. Don't need open area for basking like other caiman, like like a spectacle caiman or black caiman. So I think it's uh, it's one species out of a couple that live here in the Amazon. Uh, some of the other species, uh, one of them is endangered. It's hunted for its skin. I think this one's a little more common, and adults can be around a meter and a half long, so probably five and a half feet. And he's not too happy right now. So we're just gonna get some footage of it and then let him go. Maybe further away from the bathing area. Don't really want that. <laughs> Got an ant in my eye. Oh, well, can somebody help? Oh, oh, oh. You did it? I have an ant in my glasses. 
Okay, I'm not bad. You got him? Yeah, I got him. Oof. Oh. You okay? Alvaro looks way more badass holding that thing than I do. Buena noche. Buena noche. It still has brains on it.